Hello everyone! Welcome back to our video presentation on the resultant of force system. Today, I will present to you a sample problem on the computation of the resultant of force system using the principle of the parallelogram law. I have here the problem about a concurrent force system. The problem states that the screw I in the figure is subjected to two forces F1 and F2 determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant force. I'd like you to look at the figure and what is seen in the figure is that you have here two forces represented by F1 having a magnitude of 25 kilonewton and directed 10 degrees with respect to the vertical y-axis. This F sub 1 is intersected by another force F sub 2 having a magnitude of 50 kN and directed 15 degrees from the positive y-axis. And from this, we are required to solve for the magnitude and direction of the resultant of these two forces. So let's start now solving the problem by start identifying what are the given. So we are given the first force having a magnitude of 25 kilonewton and the second force having a magnitude of 50 kilonewton and from which we are required to solve for the magnitude and direction of the resultant. The first thing that we should do after identifying what are given and what are required is to draw a representation of the forces in terms of a free body diagram and we can have it using this illustration in drawing the free body diagram you may use the illustration as it is or you may use your own representation of the forces imagine that we have here the first on the Cartesian plane where the forces shall be acting. This, from here we are having the force F sub 1 having a magnitude of 25 kilonewton and directed 10 degrees with respect to the vertical y-axis. Here is our second force F sub 2 having a magnitude of 50 kilonewton and directed 15 degrees from the positive y-axis or uh, x-axis and from which we are required to determine the direction and the magnitude of the resultant. By applying the concept of the parallelogram law, the first thing that we should be doing is to draw the parallelogram out of the given two forces. And how are we going to solve to draw that? Now let us try to look at the tip of F sub 2. From this tip, you draw a line or a force parallel to F sub 1 and also passing to this point so that you will have here okay, the force. Similarly, at the tip of F sub 1, you draw a force parallel to and having the same magnitude of F sub 2 so that you will have this magnitude. And therefore, you now have a parallel graph. The resultant of these two forces according to the law, is the diagonal of the parallelogram that is formed on the vectors of these forces. And that is the line that joins this point as the intersection and that point as the terminal ends of the two vectors having this as the resultant of the two forces. Which can be computed okay, using the principle of the parallelogram. And how are we going to do it? Now let us try to work first on some elements that are needed in the computation of that resultant. Particularly, you would like to understand how much the total angle that these two forces are making with respect to one another. Okay, that angle alpha. You will notice that that angle alpha is also equal to an angle between this F sub 1 and the extension of F sub 2 which is this angle. 
Now, going, going back to the illustration, okay, you will notice that the alpha, this angle, and that angle sum up to 90 degrees because the total angle is equal to a right angle. And from there, we can solve for okay, alpha. Alpha is equal to 90 degrees minus 15 minus 10, and that will give us an angle equal to 65 degrees, meaning this angle is now 65 degrees. After computing this angle, we can now look at this angle, which actually is the angle opposite R. And we are going to examine this angle that is opposite R and this angle alpha are actually supplementary angle and from which we can solve for this angle that is equal to theta. Assuming that that angle is theta and theta can be computed using okay, the relation between the two angles which is equal to uh, the sum of which is equal to 180 degrees and therefore theta is equal to 180 degrees minus 65 that gives us a value equal to 115 degrees. After computing for that, we can now consider this triangle that is formed. Do you see this triangle? The blinking, the blinking orange triangle. So if we're going to imagine and examine the triangle, you will notice that the triangle consists of the following elements that are known and elements that are not known. You will notice that this triangle have two sides that are known epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 and the included angle that is also computed and therefore from the triangle we can solve for r using cosine law that gives us the formula r square is equal to 25 square plus 50 square minus twice the product of 25 and 50 times cosine of 150 and if we're going to simplify that r can be computed to be equal to 64.66. After computing for the value of R, it is necessary that the direction of that R is also computed. So let's now solve for that direction of the resultant. Now I'd like to I'd like you to note that the direction of the resultant can be expressed in terms of an angle that R makes with respect to either the X or the Y axis. That means the angle that this R will be making with respect to this X axis or the angle that this R is making with respect to the Y axis. Assuming that, we shall be, we wanted to determine the direction that is, okay, the angle that this R is making with respect to the X axis. And let us define that that angle be equal to mu. You'll notice that this angle will be equal to the sum of two angles such that it is equal to this 15 degrees and this angle beta which is not yet known. So that if we shall be able to compute for the angle beta, then this angle mu can be computed as the sum of 15 and the angle beta. But the question is, how can we compute for the angle beta? Now let us go back to this triangle that is just okay, presented here with the orange color. In that triangle, all the sides are already taken, are being computed to be 64.66, the first side being equal to the magnitude of 25 and the other side having a magnitude of 50. Thus, we have here a triangle having three sides and one angle. The other angles are herein represented by angle beta and another alpha and another alpha can be taken as okay, can be computed using sine law so that beta can be solved using the formula r is to sine of 111 representing the magnitude of this theta shall be equal to 25 representing this magnitude is to sine of the angle beta the opposite angle of 25. Now substituting the value of r and then solving for angle beta, therefore 64.66 is to sine of 115 shall be equal to 25 is to sine of beta. And from which k okay, beta shall be equal to 25, 20.51 degrees. 
Then finally, finally, the angle or the direction that R makes with respect to the x-axis shall be the sum of 20.51 plus 15 and the 4, that is 35.51. That gives us an understanding of how okay, the direction and the magnitude of okay, the resultant of force system can be computed using the principle of the parallel of Once again, thank you very much for listening.